I was invited here to Bryant Park to what they call the reading room, which is an outside reading room. And it is a fantastic opportunity because I had a story to tell that is told in the book, but a lot of people uh, who have reviewed the book haven't quite caught on to the idea. The idea is this. We're dealing with an ancient plant that is being used today because it's a filter plant, a filter swamp in Africa. So there are two concepts here. First of all, there's the antiquity of the plant and it's uh, all of the things that were done with it, the ancient paper, or the ancient boats, and all of these other things. And then there's the new modern version of using it as a filter swamp. Now, what I found was this. Some people are really attracted to the concept of the ancient plant, to the, uh, the ancient use of the plant as paper and for boats like Thor Heyerdahl and so on, uh, and to attract people to the concept of the filter swamp. What I did was to, I decided that I would promote a lot of the information about the ancient plant. So that's why I have all of these things. I've got all of these replicas of the Book of the Dead, replica of the, of the early papyrus paper Bible, and why I had this big model of the plant here, and all these other things. I do this in order to attract the attention of people, but the ultimate goal is the goal that I have in the book. I detail it in the book, and that is to save the swamps of Africa. Many of the swamps of Africa are in fact papyrus swamps. So the biggest swamp of all is the one in southern Sudan, the Sud. And in the book I make a real case, virtually every chapter I say something about the Sud and how important it is and how it's worth saving. It's about three times the size of the Everglades swamp in the United States. So we're not dealing here with a small swamp of a special nature. This is big. It's the biggest freshwater wetlands in the world. That's the way it is. And the plant that makes uh, the big difference inside it, the plant that dominates the swamp, is papyrus, which happens to be one of the fastest growing plants on Earth. That's it. That's the story. So what I did was to use the uh, ancient world and papyrus in the ancient world and how it is part and parcel of everything that's happening there. And I use that in order to save the swamps of the modern world. At the beginning of the book, I dedicate my book to the millions of young people who will lead the way to the new world, a place where I hope swamps and marshes will flourish and peace and harmony will prevail. That's what I envision. That's what I see the future involving. The water world. It's going to be water. People are going to have to live with it and cope with it. They're also going to have to be able to get fresh water still from the river uh, and bring it down into a place where you're going to have a lot of salt water coming in. And they'll have to cope with uh, desalinization, the way Brian has said. Uh, perhaps uh, using energy that would be like solar energy, which I think is a possibility. Yes. yes. So I envision the world where the marshes, both the saline marshes and freshwater marshes, are going to help Egypt to resolve the problem of the delta and allow them to live in a water world that's going to develop there. Props I bring with me. One is the Egyptian Book of the Dead. Uh, I also have. Uh, uh, the Christian Bible up here, written on the papyrus paper the way it was back in, uh, say, 100 AD. And this represents the kind of uh, scroll, papyrus scroll, that the Egyptians used. They had it put in their tomb. They put it in their tomb uh, because it actually showed inside the kinds of directions. Well, first of all, it, it showed people uh, the kind of good things that you did during your life. 
who had, since you were writing this, you were really, you really had a chance here to show people, uh, you know, why you should arrive in heaven. And the Egyptian heaven, this is hard to believe, but it's true, the Egyptian heaven was called the field of reeds. That is, is an enormous papyrus swamp in the sky. <laughs> so I thought, you know, this is the kind of thing that I'm going to bring with me to the afterlife. And I have written in here my name and all the good things that I've done in this life. Uh, I also have uh, on the back of this space where people can sign it if you're interested. Uh, so that you can come with me in the afterlife. If you put your email address on here, by the way, I'll be able to get back to you and tell you what the afterlife is all about. Uh, and also help you out if you need help uh, in that direction. A field of dreams sounds like our kind of heaven, huh? All right. We have one more? Yes. All right. Well, I really want to thank both Brian and John. It was really interesting. Thank you so much. Please buy the book. I'll be up here. Hey, Brian? Right yes. Here. Can you find this for me when you get a chance? Thank you I so sure much. will. I need to find a pen, John. You don't have I don't have a you. pen. There we have a pen. There's Steptoe and Johnson. Have you met Brian Richter from Nature yes, Conservancy? Yes, Steptoe pen one. We'll be happy to sign yours for you here. Okay. Thank you. Another one? Another one. I don't know. Question. Question. Like creating like a yes. small yes. version yeah. to actually promote. Yeah. Promote the, 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 yeah. the popular swamps. Yeah, sure. And you know something? Uh, that would really help. Out in the developing countries, they need ideas on how to use this stuff. They've got millions of acres, millions of acres. Three times the size of the Everglades. That's the swamp in the Sudan, southern Sudan. Made up of these things. How would I do it? They, uh, the idea is that they would take the stem from here and they they peel off. In 2012, there was you see this skin. Just in New York City alone. Yeah, even what you're interested in. They peel off the skin and then they take the pith on the inside and they make it into thin strips. And then the thin strips are laid together and then pressed. That's where they make the paper. Thin strip from here with a razor. Okay. Okay. And then, they dry out. and then they dry the strips, yes, so. and then dry later on they soak know. them up, and they can lay them okay, this way and lay them this way, and, and then how, press and how them. How do they put them together? Oh, uh, they, they just lay them. them. No, no, you don't have to glue anything. Just put them together and put a lot of pressure. And sometimes they roll them. Sometimes they hammer them with a mallet. Oh, kind of like they make paper in this. Yeah, that's right. And what they get is essentially the paper. I've got some here. Got some here. Let's bring it out. People want to see papyrus paper. Yeah, you can have that. Oh, thank all right. You. <laughs> You're the only one I'm going to give a piece of paper to. Oh, I can share it. We can share it. No, that's okay. Oh, you got ripped in half. Yeah. Is it is it possible? Now it's watch, fall apart? watch. Here's the here's the strip. You want to share it? You know, see this? The fibers go in this direction in the back. Yeah. And the fibers go in this direction here. Right. You had to write in this direction because your, otherwise your pen would catch. Right, I, I, I would had to catch. double the You double. see, your pen would catch yeah. on this one. Now you're using a ballpoint, so it's no problem. But in the old days, they used to quill or something that was very sharp, and it would catch on the fibers. So they had to do the right, they had to do the right thing. Here's my name. I just I put it on our Avery labels, and what I do is just take it off and I put it into the book as dead at all the various places where I need it. I've got a Hello. Um, uh, I keep my eye on my. Book. You want to sign it? You can sign it on the back if you want. Come here, put it up on the table so I can see it. We should probably just try and do it over Skype. That would work fine. Within the next couple of weeks. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, we can do that. People with books. Oh, so want to have right signed books. There. I can do it. Okay, those are the pens. Okay. Um, can I, can cell phone. Oh, that's sure. Yeah, sure. Oh, um, I will. Okay, put it up here where we can sign it. Thank you so much. Oh, here. Uh, we can find some time. Yeah, sure. This is perfect. So, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I guess I was just interested in. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah.
like I'm a recent college graduate. This is okay. something that uh, you go here intrigued you as a child? No, I actually went to the University of uh, I grew up in swamp country. Did you? Oh, yeah. Parts okay. of, uh, of Rhode Island where there's a lot of marshes and swamps. Oh, yeah. Where you? And I, you know, I mean, that was, uh, I used, from the early days, I used to have my feet in the mud. Uh, yeah. And you see me now. A lifetime's endeavor. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate right. it. Okay. Appreciate it. Anybody else with a... Uh, dedicated your life to something good. I've just been in New York for about 10 days. You get a book? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Yes. Yeah. Any particular thing? Just best regards from John? Yeah. Sorry. Do you have family here? You just have a nice pen. I, I had a pen. I came out here kind of on a wound, but I mean, it's great to have things like this. Yeah, my name is Paul. To learn more about what's happening. Obviously, I'm very interested in international affairs, but this is just happening that was great. Oh, that's great. I don't know. I'm just wondering if you had any, like, suggestions or uh, advice on this. Great. Have your pen? Oh, that's mine. Yeah, thank you. Must be. Thank you very much. Except on it. You know what? Here, uh...